But what I had was enough mother with sense because that's where my folk come from down home Mississippi deep in the Delta I had enough mother with sense to realize this I stood up the Wednesday after the Sunday I got saved in prayer and testimonial service and I said this I said listen y'all I'm a I'm a good person uh, I um I got a great job I work for the Social Security Administration I got great prospects in that job and I got two, I'm a college educator, I got two degrees. I said, all of this, all of this had me on a one-way ticket to hell. So what was I saying? I could not come into this new uh, uh, arena where, I, where the Lord had brought me into, because I didn't come there on my own. I could not come there with all this here self self uh, 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 a righteous attitude about who I was and about my status and all this and that and the other because I told them all of that had me on a one-way ticket to hell. Why? Because I did not know Jesus Christ for the pardon of my sins. I had not yet accepted him, according to Romans, the 10th chapter, the 19th verse, as my personal savior. So therefore, all that I was well, it didn't mean anything. You can be a good person in your eyes, but the Bible says there's no good thing that dwells in the flesh of man. You and I can't be good enough. So get that out of your head about being good. You can do some good. You can do some good deeds and works. Works will not get you in. It's by grace that you are saved. And it's the gift of God so that men might not boast. That ain't going to get you in. And then if you think you can get a cursory relationship with the Lord and, and allow that to work on your behalf, that won't work either. Why? Because I'm going to run you real quick, fast, in a hurry to a scripture that I love to bring forth to people as a way to shake them by their rafters. Amen. Matthew, the seventh chapter. And this is about maintaining focus, y'all. Your focus needs to be right. Not everyone, it's under that 21st verse. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Uh-oh, watch that. Mm-hmm. Uh, giving out demons in your name? Oh, my God. And done many mighty works in your name. Now, this is the verse, this is the verse I like. Then I will say to them openly, publicly, and I love the way the Amplified Bible put that in parentheses publicly because God does not do things in secret. If God has an indictment against you and I, he ain't going to do like you and I and go run and tell somebody else and do it behind our back. He going to come to you directly and publicly and, 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 and let you know. This is what he going to let you know. I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly disregarding my command. So what is God saying to me? You, 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 you just like them folks that I used to deal with, Jesus Christ. Saying, I'm, you just like the people I dealt with in my day. When I came into my own folk and I had these here religious leaders of the day, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, uh, 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 the, yeah, those those legal people, those 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 rigid, those, those religious legalistic folk, those folks, the keepers of the law, they were very good about the law and pushing the law down on the people. But the thing is that they couldn't, all that they was doing with regards to the strict requirements of the law, they weren't living by it. And so Jesus Christ said this to them when they tried to confront him. You hypocrites and vipers, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. That's what happened here in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. This, this honor that they was doing, this was cursory. God is not impressed by you what you can do. He's impressed by how you live and how you live depicts on, on whether or not you honor him with your heart. Because because out of the heart proceeds the, the things of man. The, the, the things that we do proceed forth from out of our heart. If your heart ain't right, guess what? You ain't right. Oh, Mr. Women, oh, Minister Weathersby. Minister Weathersby, why did you have to go there? My heart, I've got a good heart. God knows my heart. Oh, Lord have mercy. Why did you have to go there in the spirit? Because you did. The Holy Ghost said, correct them right now. Jeremiah 17, 9 says this about your heart and my heart. The heart is deceitful above all things. Amen. We almost done because it looks like I'm almost out of juice on the on, on the on the on the um yeah the heart is deceitful above all things. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It is exceedingly perverse and corrupt corrupt and severely mortally sick. Lord, have mercy. Who can know it, perceive, understand, be acquainted with his own heart and mind? 
Verse 10 says, I know who can. I, the Lord, search the mind, the heart, try to, I try the heart, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So what is God saying? Don't tell me about I know your heart. I, I, I ain't going to just go on, on your say so because your heart is deceitful and wicked. I'm going to go inside your heart. That stuff that you did on the outside, I'm going to go in there and see why you did it. Adam, prior to verse 19, he, and because he, there was just a singular mankind, because when God first created mankind, he only created one being. And if you don't believe me, watch this in Genesis 5. But no, we can um, just go first Genesis 127. So God created his man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created him male and female. He created them. He created them. But there was only a mention of man up through verse 18 in the second chapter of Genesis. Now, when you get in the fifth chapter, this is what it says from verse 1 through 3. This is the book, the written record, the history of the generation of the offspring of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and named them both Adam, man, at the time they were created. Lord have mercy. What am I saying? What am I saying is that when God first created man, he was a singular being, but there was two, there was two parts to him. And here's the key, y'all. The two parts were male and female. And why was that so? Because they are opposite of one another. They're opposite of one another. That's the significance of verse 16 when God told, 17 when God told the man, the, uh, uh, the Lord God commanded the man saying, you may freely of every tree of the, tree of the knowledge of, of the garden, tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, blessing and calamity, you shall not eat for the day that you eat of you shall surely die. So what was God telling him? The good, the good and evil, they're polar opposites. Calam blessings and calamity, polar opposites. Man, when God created him, the reason why God was able to commune with him, because man knew no sin. He did not know sin. He did not know evil. But understand this, because God is a God of balance in man's flesh, there always existed those things. He just didn't know about it. That's why the word of God says, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Blessings and calamity. It didn't say from the tree of good and evil and blessings and calamity. It says the knowledge of it. Because man didn't know that in his flesh that thing existed. All he knew was like them cherubims. Holy, 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 holy. Because he was in the image of God. But once he bit into that fruit, it awakened that sin principle in his flesh. And then immediately he knew what, what was going on. How did I know that happened? As soon as they bit into that fruit, they realized they were both naked. And they, him and that woman clothe themselves with fig leaves to cover themselves up. And the reason why they cover themselves up, because in the 25th verse of Genesis 2.25, after they, or uh, 2.24, they, they became one, uh, a husband and wife became one flesh. And the Bible says, and they were naked and not ashamed. But once they bit into that fruit, that, that opened up that sin principle, their eyes were opened up in a different way. Previously, they had the spiritual eyes of God operating. But when that, when that, they bit into that fruit, then they had the eyes of the flesh operating in. Uh-huh. The lust, the lust of the, the lust of the eyes, pride of life, that thing, that opened up, and they were looking at each other in, the, in in their nakedness, and all of a sudden things started happening physiologically with them. And when that physiological thing started to happen with them, it just threw them completely off kilter. They could not maintain their focus no more because that was God was meaning to them when He said, "The day that you eat it, you shall surely die." It wasn't a physical death that they, they undertook. They undertook the spiritual death. Because as soon as that happened, they, they started having those urges. And they tried to cover it up. So they wouldn't have it anymore. Then they realized they had messed up with God. So what, they went, what did they do? They went hid in the bushes. Until God called them out. Lord have mercy. Maintain your focus. Let me get back to Nehemiah. <laughs> I thank God for his word, y'all. I really do. I had no inclination... No inclination under the sun that where God took us is where we would be going. Because I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. When God gives me a message, I don't write it down, nothing down, don't script anything. 
I trust God because I, I, He trusts me. Um, I, I, I study scripture that I'm that I know I have studied of scripture, and when I look at the word, I don't open up there and look in there and see well, Arthur analyze that according to your intellect. No, I let the Holy Ghost illuminate the scriptures to me. Amen. He will always take you to the right place because the Bible says that he will lead you into all paths of righteousness. So if you're doing anything with God, this is the thing. This is this is true to the message about maintaining your focus. When you maintain the proper focus, you will not go wrong. How do I know that? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5, 6. That's my foundational scripture for understanding the faith. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. I'm in, I'm in the message now. I've been in the message. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The third verse. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was near him. And he said, what they build, if a fox climbs upon it, will break it down their stone wall. And Nehemiah prayed. That's the proper focus, y'all. Hear, O God, for we are despised. Turn their taunts upon their heads and give them for a, a prey in the land of their captivity. Now, why did Nehemiah do that? Because the battle wasn't theirs. It was the Lord's. And when you give it over to God, he fights all your battles. Guess what? He wins. How do I know that? Well, we're overcomers because Christ overcame. Christ overcame all the way through the death of the cross. He went down in the grave. Went down there, jacked up Satan for what he had did with us. And then took on death and, and slapped him about. And, and, and to show that he had power over death, God Christ, God the Father, raised up the Son from the dead. And, and then the word of God says, Oh, death, where is your sting? The grave couldn't hold him. And, and if, if I got somebody that's on my side, <laughs> the Bible says, If God be for me, who can be against me? And if I got somebody that's greater in me than he does in this world, and if I got somebody that says, No weapons formed against you shall prosper, then why do I need to fight somebody? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I don't fear no evil. Why? I ride and I staff, they comfort me. It ain't mine, so I give it over to Jesus. When you give it over to him, <laughs> he fights all the battles. And guess what? He wins. He ain't lost the fight yet, and he never will. Amen. He can't lose. He's God. He's, he, why can't he not lose, Arthur? Because he's from everlasting to everlasting. Nobody else is from everlasting to everlasting but God. Nobody else is self-existent but God. Didn't nobody make him. Nobody even counsels God. Lord have mercy. I'm almost done. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah. Turn on that tongue. Yeah, cover not their iniquity and let not their sin be blotted out before you. Because God is a merciful God. So Nehemiah said, no, come on, Lord, don't, don't, don't give him all that mercy. Because his mercy is from everlasting. His grace is not. Grace will not always strive with man. So we built the wall. Oh, no, let me finish that, that fifth verse. Cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out before you. For they have vexed, they have vexed with alarm the builders, that's them, and provoked you. Yeah, I, we want to make sure, God, that you take care of them. But, but we don't want to just do it just because of us. They really mess with you. Because we're your servants. And, and, and anything that we do, uh, 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 it affects you. Because we are bond servants of yours, God. Because we're in a relationship with you. Oh, yeah. If anything happens with us, it, it impacts you. And God will always protect his own. Sixth verse, here we are. We're almost done. So we built the wall. And all of it was joined together to have its height, for the people had a heart and mind to work. Now, the significance of the first five verses, the significance of some of the things that I've shared with you already is, is that the reason why you have to learn how to maintain your focus, because the world is not designed for you to maintain your focus. There's distractions all around you. Matter of fact, the greatest distraction is within your own self. The Apostle Paul says that, you know what, there's a war going on in my members. Check out Romans, the seventh chapter, y'all. There's a war going on in my members. In my, within me, I find out that, that there, I, I can't, I just don't understand it. I'm isogeting the text. I can't understand it. It seems like the thing that I want to do, that ain't what I'm doing. And the very thing that I did, that I, that I, 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 oh my God, that very thing that I do, it just don't make no sense why I'm doing it. So wait a minute, what's going on here with me? I, 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 oh, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from all of this? I can't even control my own self. That's right, y'all. That flesh of ours cannot be controlled. But when you come under control of the Holy Ghost, 
and your spirit is controlled, then guess what? You can walk in the light. That's right. You can walk in the light because why? The light is leading.